All right, hi. Um, this is Darren Wallace. I'm with SMC, and we're going to talk a little bit about our new HX Poly, Advanced Tech HX, but I don't know exactly who's on the line, so I just wanted a couple slides here about who I am. I've worked here a long time. I work in uh, product development, um, but also with engineering and tooling, um, product design and implementation, basically the whole gambit of getting things from an idea um, to actually made and out the door. Um, SMC's been around a long time, 1967, and mostly we started in mountaineering, uh, manufacturing crampons. Um, carabiners for REI were a big deal back in the 60s and 70s, but then we kind of made a transition into rescue um, primarily, we still do mountaineering stuff, but in the 80s into rescue. Um, we manufacture pulleys, carabiners, um, a lot of anchoring systems. If you guys have seen the pteradapter tripods, they're um, the big orange and gray things. They're starting to be seen around more. That's something we do. Um, but the one to really talk about the this pulley here today, the Advanced Tech HX and the Tech Mate, um, and they're pretty new to us. I'm not sure how many months out now, but not a real long time. Um, we make a lot of other pulleys, and so this is just a, one of many in our line, and mostly our pulleys are, are known for being good fit. They're not clunky pulleys. They uh, have good action when you turn the side plates. They stay. They don't rattle. Um, we use only the best materials. Uh, we pick ball bearings and real oil light bushings. So we've got a pretty long history in pulleys. People might recognize the Russ Anderson line of pulleys. That's something we've been making for, gosh, decades. Um, I think since he wanted them out of his garage. So what we have with the Advanced Tech HX is We've taken a pretty darn small pulley. This one's just about five inches long and two and three quarter inches wide. And we've added, we've made it a double pulley, and we've put a cam internal. And it's it's not real internal you see in some of the videos, but it's enough to to protect it from being hung up in gear and rigging. Um, putting the cam inside also gives us a stronger pulley. Um, but the whole idea around the the pulley is that there's a lot of instances where you don't want to use prusik loops, and we'll we'll go into that more. But having a cam pulley um, makes a real clean rig, and we'll show some other features about it. One of the things that that makes ours different than a lot of the cam pulleys you'll see out on the market, and again, as we get further into this, you'll see. But our our cam mechanism is real, I guess I call it clean and tight. There's no pins and cables and things that are hanging out to be caught on stuff. Um, so we, we think it's good that way. It's also a pretty strong pulley. Um, we I think we rate it, there it is, at 7,600 pounds. And the Beckett is also strong. So it can handle quite a bit of load itself. But we'll talk about how the, the cam is on this device. And the other pulley we use kind of uh, together because it's it's actually made to be a mate for the Advanced Tech HX. And it's pretty tiny, and basically it's orange, and it looks like the other pulley. It's also got a high-efficiency ball bearing. Um, it doesn't have a Beckett because the other pulley does, and that allows you to create even smaller systems. Um, and it is really tiny. Um, can't really put one in your hand on this display here, but it's uh, under three inches long. And you'll see one of the other features. I guess we can see probably the arrow there, but ours, we have pins across ours to actually hold the gear in place. And we'll show you when we, when we have a little video of rigging this, how that works. So the idea of this pulley set is a little four to one systems that people use. Um, for everything from tiebacks to 
Uh, just a personal, you can raise and lower. Um, some people use them on the edge uh, as extension systems, um, piggyback systems for hauling. And this pulley will handle, um, with this cam, anywhere from 7 to 12 and a half millimeter rope. And granted, the 12 and a half millimeter rope is pretty big for this, but it does do all of the functions correctly. Um, and I would say, you know, if you're going to use it on a 12.5, probably stick into something that's pretty supple would be a good deal. Um, but you can see in this picture how we integrated the cam right inside the pulley. And this is the, um, I'm guessing people are seeing my arrow, but um, that's the stainless pins and cams that are all put away behind this side plate. And another bit of good thing about having that all put away behind the side plate is once you actually rig this pulley and the mate, when you close up those side plates, the um, ropes themselves, they, they're really resistant to going up and over and creating a twisted tangle mess because the stainless guide pins, we call them, actually can hold the ropes in place. So you, you end up being able to pull this out of the bag and have it be pretty much ready to go. Um, and this is also a point where I could point out the, the black cam lever on the outside of this pulley. That's what we use to adjust where the cam is, whether it's engaged or parked. And again, we'll go into that a little bit more. But see, there's no stuff hanging off of it. So here's a, um, hopefully this works, um, a little clip of rigging, the, a simple four to one. And I, I realize there's lots of different ways to do it. But this, we, we think, is a pretty simple way. And it starts with its Beckett. Um, as the attachment point, and we'll go ahead and play it. You see how when we're loading that, we're going behind the guide pins. And as you do this, there's a little acronym that if you go up behind the guide pins, then you're always rigging this correctly, and you don't end up with the cam going the wrong way. And you see at the very end, just engaging the, the cam. I think I'm going to run that one more time. Just so people can see that it's it's a pretty quick setup. And because it's got a cam in there and because there's no ratchets and pins and things, that just putting it in the right spot, closing the side plates, and then at the very end, just engaging the cam, you'll see it happening right there. And now that system's ready to go. So i go over a little bit about a cam operation. The, the cam is, is integral. It's always there. You can't take it out or you can't block it. So it really has two positions. It's either engaged, which you um, turn the cam lever uh, counterclockwise, and then it rides on the rope, whatever size rope you have in there. It's spring-loaded and riding against the rope, and it's ready to engage immediately uh, with, with no kind of settling back in place. If you don't want the cam engaged, you see a slight difference in the position of the cam. There's actually a park position where if you retract it all the way up, it clicks into place and stays there. And so this pulley um, is now there's no cam engaged, so it's just a regular double pulley. And in, in fact, here you could, um, because of the way they're designed, you could run a pressic in here if, if you really felt like it or had the need for it. And I'll go into that also a little bit more. Um, you'll see some standard cautions on here, because once you park that cam, it's, it's really not engaged. And until you re-engage it, you've got nothing holding that. So you may want to make sure that that cam is engaged before you ever release the tail end of a, a rope in a loaded system. That's probably, you know, second nature to everybody. But, you know, sometimes it's worth an extra little reminder. Um, so we've got a, a video here of just engaging and releasing the cam. And I, I think it might be a, a couple loops, but I will run that for you. 
You can see there it's engaged right now. And you raise the rope, and as you're raising it, you just take your thumb and push it up to the park position, and now it's free running. And just a flip of the finger, and it's back to engaged. So that's a, a pretty easy way to do it. Um, there's also a couple ways, too, because this pulley can be used in a lot of instances where you can't put your hands on it. Um, so this is one of the tricks that it's, you kind of have to see in person or on video. can't really describe it real well in the directions. But um, if that pulley is up out of the way and you can't actually flip that lever with your fingers, we call this the rope flip, but it's, the lever is hooked in a way that you can take the rope and actually hook the lever. So once it's in the park position, you can bring the tail around and hook it, and now it's re-engaged. So you don't have to be able to reach it to do that. And it doesn't take a lot of force on that rope to make that happen. I think we've got a, another video after this or a little further in that shows it happening again. So it's a, I think a pretty cool feature, no, no cords and things like that. Um, this is the a video of the same thing. We've also got a hole in there so that if it's way out of reach, you can operate this with an accessory cord. Um, although the further out of reach you get, it's, you know, it becomes more difficult, but I'll let you watch. This is up on a tear adapter. You can see we're engaging it by pulling on the cord, and we're disengaging it by using that rope flip. I might play this one again also because this is one where I think some people have difficulty that with this device, that cam is engaged all the time when you're not in the park position. And so when you're going to, to pull on that accessory cord to, to disengage the cam, you actually have to be raising your load up as you're pulling the cord. And I've, I've heard from different people that it's really hard to pull on that cord and the reason is it's hard to pull on the cord is because the cam is still holding your load. So you have to actually raise the load and unload the cam so you can disengage it. So I'll, I'll try and play this again. And i got to go back now. I'll play this again, and you can see what, it, what I'm talking about. As you pull the cord, you got to be raising it a little bit. Uh, maybe it's not the best video for that, but that is the case. You want to be raising slightly as you disengage the cam. So some of the things to consider in this, it, this is a cammed pulley, and there are things that cams are really good at, and to be honest, there are things that Presics are really good at. Um, but they also have some things they're not good at. So kind of looking at this system the way we did is that with a cam, you don't have to remember any knots. And I know it sounds kind of weird, but like everyone should know how to tie a prusik, which, by the way, I think I spelled prusik three different ways in this presentation, so just for your entertainment. Um, different spell checkers like it different ways, so I don't know. I let it be whatever it is. So anyways, the pressing knot, I've, I've walked up, and even myself, and you get busy, and boy, can you do it right? Can you do it wrong? Um, who knows how to do it right? Who knows how to do it wrong? Um, the other thing about um, pressics is that you have to be able to understand which size pressic cord to use on which size rope. And even in that case, what the conditions are. You know, do you need a more supple, small cord if it's going to be icy, um, that kind of thing. With a cam, you don't have to remember knots. You don't have to remember rope selection. Um, if you don't already have the system set up, a cam system, as you saw in that previous video, it's pretty quick to set up. And granted, most of the time people leave these set up. Um, it's not always the case. 
Um, the other thing I really like about CAMS is that immediate action. And I, I have a video on that, that when you, when you raise up something that's riding on a CAM, especially in the position that ours is, if you have like a, a small system and maybe you want to tilt a litter just slightly, um, if you want to raise a rope an inch or an inch and a half, you just pull on the rope and that cam is ready to raise the load the second you pull on that rope. It doesn't have to take up slack in a prussic, um, take up gap in a prussic if, you know, if you've got a prussic that's too long for the system, maybe you share prussics from one system to another. Um, with a prussic system, if you want to raise an inch and a half, you might have to pull it up five or six inches and then have it settle back three or four. So with a cam, you just don't have that happening. Um, some of the negatives on cams, though, um, especially ones that have the type of cam we have that can uh, react real immediately um, and have a real firm grip on the rope so that you get a good progress capture, these cams can be rough on ropes. But people look at our cam and, and can say, wow, that's, that's really aggressive. But I also can turn those same people and say, look at your ascender or some of um, the competition out there with different type of cams that have these little rows of fangs on them um, because they're meant to grip the rope and not slip. And for something that's progress capture or small system that aren't expected to see, you know, it's not expected to be a fall protection, having an aggressive cam on there gives you the really good benefits of not having things slip and settle, um, having them not be uh, rope dependent. You know, it's going to act the same on a polyester rope as a nylon because it just bites into the rope. Um, and yeah, that can be rough on the sheath of ropes, but no more so than handle ascenders um, and some of the other devices. And I really don't hear much about those from people, you know, wearing out their ropes. But just in this one, it's a little different. But it's there. It's a little different and aggressive for the reason. And you'll see in some of the videos we got coming up. Um, I think that kind of covers things. The prussics do have the benefit of if you're setting up a system that's going to be uh, have a potential of a really high load. Um, prussics generally can slip in most cases to limit the load. So you might have a reason where you don't want the cam uh, the cam to be the type of, of stopping you have. But in, in here, in our pulley system, you can actually disengage that cam and put a pressic in there if you really want a max load. Or maybe you're setting up in a system where you want to do progress capture, but you also want to have this be some sort of a, a fall protection in which case the cam is not going to be what you want. You could actually run this with a prussic and a cam and just disengage the cam after you've tensioned the system. So this is a, a little video just that I call it a seesaw action, but it's something that I think that this cam pulley really excels at. And I, and I think about the, the number of times you might use this type of system to make minute adjustments and things. Or the other thing is if you're like trying to tension something, why why would you want to pull it really super tension it and then have the system relax back? And so this video kind of will show you what I'm I'm meaning here. And yeah, that prussic is pretty long, but I need to emphasize the action. But you see to raise something just an inch, you've got to actually pull it really far. And with a cam, if I want to go up a little bit, I just pull a little bit, and there's no settle back. So if you want your half of an inch up or an inch up, you just pull it what you want it, and that cam just engages. So this would be really great for minute adjustments. Or if you wanted to add a little more tension to a system but didn't want to, to really stretch it tight and then have it relax. I'm going to probably should have put these all in there twice. I wanted to, while I'm talking through it, I want to actually have you see that action again, that prussic action.
So this is with the cam engaged, obviously. I think another thing to note on there too is that when you're using bigger ropes, the knots can actually um, do their own pressic minding unless you're really good at setting the, the pressics at the right length, the big knot on the becket, and that you would you would see it, it could pressic mind. Right. So another thing we we felt like we had to contend with a little bit on this, one would be the aggressive nature of the cam, but the second one is the, the strength ratings on cam pulleys and cams in general. Um, this pulley has a rating of 7,600 pounds force, and that would be the same way that like an NFPA or somebody, uh, a body might be testing these, and that's simply with a rope loop just like any other double pulley. Right now if you go out and, and buy a double pulley that has a cam in it or doesn't have a cam in it, there isn't any standard that tells you how strong the cam should be. And when you read the rating on the pulley, they're not testing the cam. And I think that it's pretty intuitive that cams are not as strong as just a loop of rope. And so in this case, just using this pulley as a, as a double pulley, maybe with the cam disengaged. Um, any, we rate this on anywhere from seven to 12 five rope, and our actual user instructions will tell you the ropes that we used for these tests because we did do some more advanced testing. So anyways, it's a, a 34 kilonewton pulley, and so is the mate pulley on any of those ropes, the seven to 12 five, um, and those would be typical if you decide you want to pick out a super weak seven millimeter rope versus I believe these were uh, PMI tough cords and that's a uh, I don't know the specifics of it but it's pretty nice in this system it's small and and uh, doesn't have a, a lot of stretch in it um, and it's pretty tough as I guess the name goes so that's what I think we used in this one um, and the Beckett it's pretty strong um, 4,000 pounds, and there are a couple different ways people can rig these. Um, you're not going to need it anywhere near that strong in a uh, four to one, but if someone were to, to rig this in a way where you're only doing like half the load on that becket, um, we want to make sure we have a strong becket because the purpose of this pulley system is hauling and raising, and you know, so you want to have strength there. Um, in our user instructions to contend with the, the way pulleys are rated right now, we actually did testing on specific cords, as I, as I said, and we have tested these pulleys in a four-to-one system, um, the way you guys are going to use them, and with different ropes. And you can see that this is with the cam engaged, um, that like with a seven millimeter, this will actually, the cam will um, will start harming the rope above 2,000 pounds and shortly thereafter will fail. But what we're trying to do with these numbers and actually presenting them to you guys with the instructions is so you get a really realistic idea of what our cam pulley as well as everyone else's out there is really capable of. Um, we're just going to give you the information because we know that the ratings on the pulleys don't really cover it. Um, and I don't know that these numbers are the same if you were to buy one of our competitors' pulleys. Um, i got to believe that their cams are going to harm ropes the same way ours are because that's just the way they are, the things with uh, rope grabs throughout the last decades that they can be pretty harsh. Uh, senders can be pretty harsh. So what we're trying to do here is the pulley is going to say 8,000 pounds on it, but if you read the directions, you're going to actually know that if you do a typical 4 to 1 system on the tiny 7 millimeter rope, that you really should only be looking at 2,000 pounds from uh, carabiner hole to carabiner hole on these pulleys. Um, I think that the nine millimeter cord might be a more typical cord people would use on this, and it's still about 2,500 pounds. 
and these are these are a little bit conservative numbers, but really you don't want to plan on going above that and having it just working on the cam. Um, if you do need big hauling ability, as I said, these are pretty strong pulleys in themselves, and if you bump up to the max rope, the 12.5, and I again, I think this was a PMI rope, maybe a classic, classic easy, something like that, something that's pretty pretty durable, and you can be up to 4,500 pounds uh, before you're starting to be in the danger zone as far as hurting your rope with the cam. Um, and we've tested these quite a bit at that level. So again, you see an 8,000 or 34 kilonewton, 7,600 pound pulley. That's what the pulley will do. But if you're going to use it on the, the cam that's in the system, these are the real numbers you should be looking at. Um, and if you maybe you're rigging the same way with a competitor's cam pulley, I would be asking them, what are, what are the real ratings? Uh, because, to be honest, I think it's it's dangerous to be um, advertising something as a 7,000, 8,000 pound pulley when you know darn well that the people using them are going to use them in this manner. Um, so that's why we presented these numbers. And we've got a, a few other set of numbers I will uh, show you too. This one is one I, I really discourage and we almost put these numbers in these, as I said, these numbers are in the user instructions, but we really considered putting these in there as a wake up um, for people that use this kind of method that if you just want to use the cam as a, as a directional, you're only going to loop one loop of rope over the shiv. So that strand of rope is going to be seeing full load. It's not going to be reduced four to one. Uh, if you're doing this with seven millimeter cord, um, just to maybe follow someone as they're walking, um, or maybe you think it's okay for like work positioning. It's really not, um, because if you look at seven millimeter cord at 500 pounds, you can actually start cutting into that sheath of the rope, and at that point, you're you know you're taking your life in your own hands. So, really want to discourage this practice, and so reading those numbers. Um, should I hope it's a wake-up call for people and we caution people that this is not what we intend to do you read those numbers and it's not really saying it's safe to do it up to 500 pounds I'm really want people to understand we're not encouraging this we are discouraging this um, thinking that we're We've got a, a one video in here, and Don, the guy in sales, has set this up. I, I believe that we've got sound in this, but I've never heard it, so who knows what it is. Um, it's just a, some brake testing that we had, had done, because everyone likes to see things broken. This is the Advanced Tech HX, and I think that, again, is the seven, probably the seven millimeter tough cord. And this is the... The, um, just the pulley test is not on a cam. You'll have to be quick with your eyeballs. what it broke at. Our rating on the pulley, that manner, is still 7,600 pounds. Um, this is the Advanced Tech Mate, the, the same system, just pulling it to break. Very small pulley, but um, they're really strong. And this is also a testament to the PMI cord, which is 7 millimeter cord. Uh, over 8,000 pounds in this system. The pulley that's breaking, I believe. This one goes quick, too. Give me 
got a little of the picture. And as I said, those were the actual brake numbers. 85, 55, it's like something in the fixture model. So I'm, I'm done running through an overview of that pulley and pulley system. And I'm not 100% sure how this works. But um, if you guys have questions, I think that you have an opportunity to ask them now, and I can respond. Yep. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and type them into the chat slash questions area of your control panel. I'm going to switch the screen back over to mine. Okay. All right. Oh, I must have been either thorough or boring. <laughs> All right, yeah, we don't have any questions yet, but like I said, please type them into the chat slash questions area of your control panel. Um, and we can definitely get to them during the presentation if you want. Um, and then we are also going to have a, um, we're going to have a link on our website for you to email Gary in the future if you have any questions. And actually, there isn't any questions, but a lot of people have been saying good job. So apparently you were very thorough. Oh, okay. Thank you. So um, as I said, you can visit our website, which is shown on your screen to ask Darren further questions. There will be a link to email him, which will be on our website shortly. Also, uh, to download the slides or watch a recording of this webinar, you can visit the same site. And those options are going to be available on Monday afternoon. And um, the PMI webinar series hosts um, webinars very frequently. So keep an eye on our website for future dates and topics. And you can get news and updates from PMI and SMC through um, a newsletter, Twitter, and Facebook. You can see all of the links available there. And the PMI newsletter gives you um, updates on our all of our webinars. So that would be um, a good source if you want to follow us. Um, and we do actually have one question for you, or actually a few questions. So um, the first question is, um, what is the weight and size compared to an Aztec system? You know, we don't know that off the top of our head. Uh, <laughs> marketing guy says we're lighter. Um, we don't know that off the top of our head, but the, that was obviously someone we were targeting against when we came up with this system. And so I believe we're, we're going to be right at their weight, if not lighter, because I don't think we missed our target on this. Um, so I can't... I, I can't tell you that for sure. One ad advantage we do have over that system is you saw the way our, our side plates actually still open. You don't have to pre-rig the system. Um, if you have one set of pulleys and you um, this set and you use it in a little pre-rigged system with a light rope, if conditions demand that you want to use these pulleys with a heavier rope, you don't have to unthread everything. You can um, you can just uh, re-rig it because they really are normal pulleys. Um, they're in a specialized system, but they're aside from the way you rig them, they are normal pulleys. So you can change them out, and and that's with the Aztec system. I, I think that's a little more difficult. It's pretty pretty specialized, and once you set it up, it's set up. Okay, um, and the next question is, did you conduct a braking test with the cam engaged? Yeah, yeah, those were the, um, the numbers on the slides with the 7 millimeter, 9, 5, and 12. Um, those were tests that we did with it on with the cam engaged. Those were the real world. We, we hooked up one pulley to the other pulley with that system parked on the cam, and that was I guess I didn't make that clear because that's really the gist of why we're presenting those numbers is because we really did put them on the cam. And it's, it's not a, a fake number that's only the strength of the pulley. I, I didn't have videos of, of that in here, but that is definitely the way we arrived at those numbers we published parked on the cam or engaged, cam engaged. So, for lighter. 
Oh, marketing guy has just Googled something and found out that we're slightly lighter than the Aztec system. By 0.5 ounces. 0.5 ounces lighter. That's Very a marketing good. number, too, so who knows. Um, and kind of a follow-up to that previous question about the um, breaking with the cam engaged, um, which failed, the cam or the rope? The rope in all, in all the cases. And the numbers we have there are they are a little conservative that I considered a failure, um, not when the system disengaged, but when I can hear and see physical manifestations of the sheath of the rope tearing then that, you know, we used a conservative number lower than that. Um, but it's definitely, with our aggressive cam in there, it, I mean, I'm, I won't make an apologies for that, that it is the rope that is harmed by that cam, but that is the trade-off for having an immediate action, real firm um, action um, that you get with that system. So. Great. Um, and that looks like all of the questions so far. Um, okay. And so if you have any others, like I said, you can visit our website and there will be an email link to contact Garen directly. And um, we really appreciate you all coming to the webinar and we hope it was uh, informative. And thank you, Garen, very much for doing it. Well, thank you. All right. Have a great Enjoy day, it. everybody.